Hello, sixth graders. Today we're going to be using a protractor to make a circle graph. This will be pretty fun, okay? The table below shows a breakdown by age group of adults who listen to classical music. Use a protractor to make a circle graph. Do not use the percent circle. Write a title for the graph. So here's the, the data here. So we have to find out how many degrees the measure is. So we have to do the math right away. So you're wondering, how does 11% convert to a degree? Well, you have to type in 0.11 for 11% times 360. That's how you would do it. And then we're gonna have to do 0.18 times, times 360 for the 18%. Then we're gonna have to go 0.24 times 360. So let's do that for all of these. So I'm gonna use a calculator so you can follow along and see how this works, okay? We have 0.11 times 360 equals, we have about 39 degrees. So we'll round this up to a 40, okay? 40 degrees. We'll get as close as possible, okay? Then we're gonna go 0.18 times 360, we get 65 degrees. We can do a 40 down here for this 11%, right? Because that'd be the same degrees. Then we have a 24, so it'd be 0 0.24 times 360 equals 86. We'll round that down to 86 degrees. Okay, the 20, we got 0 0.20 times 360 equals 72 degrees. And then the last one is 0 0.16 times 360 equals, we'll round that up to 58. Now before we get going, we should add all these up to see if it even equals 360, right? So we have 40 plus 65 plus 86 plus 72 plus 40 plus 58 equals 361. That's close enough. So this is how we're going to graph these. So the 11%, we need a 40 degrees. And when you're doing anything with graphing, you have to always start with a, a line right here to start with. And now we'll we'll make sure to measure 40 degrees. So right there is our 40 degree mark. Connect it right at the middle. Now I'm going to rotate our percent circle. So it looks, sorry, not a percent circle, I apologize, our protractor. So we're at zero again. So we have to get a measurement of 65 degrees. So that would be right here between the 60 and the 70. I'm gonna connect right at the 65. I'm gonna go rotate this again. Okay, let's see how this one is 86. So 80, 85, 86, roughly there. I'm gonna connect the line. Keep on cruising along. We need a 72, so I'm gonna get my line again. And when you have a pencil, you can just make a mark, a little right, mark here, mark there, and then draw a line. But I got a computer, so I'm gonna go a little faster. So I'm at 72, 72 would be right about there. I'm going to go ahead and connect it. I'm going to just rotate this again clockwise. And if you have questions with this, I'll probably ask you to refer back to the video because this is pretty easy as long as you stay consistent with your rotating. I'm at a 40 here. And the last one should be 58 degrees. So let's see how good I was with my measurement. You were watching. Maybe I made a mistake. And it's not exactly 58. We look like we're about 55 here. I was close. I was three degrees off. And if I was correcting your work, or when I am correcting your work, I'm not going to be too off. I'll probably give you about five degrees on both sides. So just keep that in mind. Let's take a look at this, right? There's some questions that go with this now. It says, on average, about 8 million adults listen to classical music on the radio each day. Estimate how many adults between the ages of 35 and 44 listen to classical music. Well, let's see here. 35 to 44 is right here. That's 24%. Okay. And we're on question A, 24% is pretty close to 25%, right? So I'm gonna round it to 25%. And 25% is really close to one fourth, isn't it? 
And one fourth means you're dividing by by four. So when I have eight million, and I have to divide that by four, my question mark, oops, by four, that means I would be at two million for an estimate. Two million. I would say maybe just under two million. And we'll write down adults for a unit, okay? Estimate how many adults at least 45 years old listen to classical music, at least 45 years old. So that means we're going to have to add the 20, the 11, and the 16 together because that's what at least 25 years old means there. I don't know where my calculator went. So I have a 20 plus 11 plus 16. That equals 47%. Do you guys see at least 45 seconds? I have to add these three up. If I'm adding those three up. That means I would, oops, wrong problem. There we go. Sorry. Um, that means I would have to take 8 million, and I'm going to divide it by um, half. Divide this by two, which would equal four million for an answer. So this would be four million adults. Okay. Last but not least, we still have a little bit of time because it's a short video. We're going to do some practice, okay? We're going to put these numbers in order, but I need to make these all look the same. So the first will have 7.00. My next one, I better make sure this is 0 0.07. My next one is negative 7.00. Then I have 0, 0.0, oh, I apologize, 0 0.7. And I have a 0. So I'm putting these orders from smallest to largest. Take a look, I would say this one's my smallest. My next smallest would be 0. Then my next smallest there would be here. I need to make these all look the same. 70 is bigger than 7. Point zero point zero zero. You see how I'm doing this, kids? And then 7 is my largest number. Least to greatest. Perfect. Last one here. What are these from least to greatest? Oh, i got to make these all look the same. So I'll 0 0.25, got 0 0.25, 0 0.25, better not cut any corners, 0 0.75, 0 0.20, four fifths, four fifths, I got to change four over five, I got to change that into a hundred, so I have a hundred here, I'm not by my mark, so I'm going times 20, times 20, equals 80 over 100, right, kids? So this would be 0 0.80, which would be my 4 slash 5. I know i got to keep that by it. It's pretty important. 1.00 would be my 4 divided by 4. I've got... 0 0.0.06, 0 .06. I have 0 0.18, and 1 tenth, that's an easy one, 0 0.10. Put these order in order from smallest to largest. Let's take a look. 1 tenth is pretty small, but 0 0.06 is really small, because it's 6, then I have a 10. What else do I have? I have an 18, got a 20, 25, 75, 4 fifths, and I have 1. It's really easy as long as you convert them so they all look the same. You see a lot of these on your math boxes, kids, and this, these are ones that you tend to get wrong. So please take the time to convert them to all, or all to decimals that you can read easily. Hopefully this helped with your math. This problem right here was a lot of fun, but remember you're finding the percent of 360 when you're finding the degree measure. Um, good luck with Matt today. I look forward to working with you.